Through the mirror of my mind, time after time, I see reflections of you and me. Reflections of the way life used to be. Reflections of the love you took from me. Oh, I'm all alone now, no love to shield me. Trapped in a world that's a distorted reality. All the time, all the love that I wasted All the tears that I've tasted dun, 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 dun. Hey, hey, hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Journey to Purpose with me, Erica Lasan. And this week we are continuing our conversation about learning and we're tackling the subject of reflection and how the atmospheres that we live in and the environments that we create ourselves are actually a reflection of the things that we say, the things that we do, as well as the things that we believe. And one of the greatest ways to perceive how your words are helping you create or manifest the life that you want is to take inventory of the fruit that your life bears. We started to touch on this briefly last week, but I needed to do a full on episode because there were some things that I've learned over the course of my journey, especially through parenthood, that really helped me understand ways in which I could better um, the use of my words and the intention behind my words to create a world that I really wanted, not only for myself, but also for my children. For all of you who aren't parents, I am also speaking to you too, because what I find in my work as a joy strategist is that a lot of times people want to have a different life. They want things to be different. They want things to feel different. They're not taking that time for stillness to really ground themselves in assessing what it is that they have, what it is that they really want, and who they have to be to get there. One of the things that I do as a joy strategist when I work with women and entrepreneurs is that I help them take inventory of what it is that they currently have, the areas in their lives that they seek to feel or have improvement, but then also understanding how they can work with what they have and refine it in order to put them on path for the vision that they are creating for themselves or that they desire to create for themselves. So in saying all of this, and I know that I've said a lot now, my main question to you listening today is, are you paying attention to what your world is reflecting back to you? And what does your environment, the people, your career, the places around you and your wellness, what do all of these things within your environment ultimately say about you? And as you take time to think about this, I also want you to consider what is it that you yourself are putting into the world? What are you putting into the world? And as always, I wanna share a little bit about what inspired this conversation. Because a lot of times, these conversations that I bring to you weekly are inspired by everyday life, thoughts that I have as I am living. And this conversation is yet again inspired by parenthood. Because one of the things that I was most terrified about before I became a mother was that motherhood would limit me from creating a life that I wanted. I thought that I had to be a certain type of way in order to be a good mom. I thought that motherhood would keep me from pursuing a life of purpose and passion. I thought that motherhood would inhibit me from really living fully in my creativity and doing the things that I enjoy. But what I found was that motherhood actually gave me the freedom to really unapologetically pursue a life of joy and also understanding that I get to create, I get to manifest, I get to design the life that I desire for myself. But another thing that I found unintentionally is that my children are some of the greatest reflections of the things that I'm doing really well in terms of creating that vision and that life that I really want to manifest. But they're also a wonderful mirror um, to hold up <laughs> in reflecting back to me the areas of my life that I could really afford to improve on personally. And I'm saying this as a business owner, I'm saying this as a partner and a spouse to a wonderful man. And I'm saying this as someone who really wants to show up as the best possible version um, 
of a person in the world. Things that really got me thinking about this was just watching our oldest, our daughter Aria, and she's only five years old, but she's such a firecracker and she has so much spark, um, energy and love and light to give. And when I see her, I see some of the good that I bring as a mom. I see some of the, um, I don't wanna call it the bad. And I also see a little bit of everything in between. And when I say everything in between, I'm talking about um, Aria just developing her personality. A couple of months ago while I was working, I realized that as I was hearing Aria call after Jace, she was saying it with some some bass in her voice. And when I say bass in her voice, she would like she would have a little body to it. Like she would put her mommy voice on. And by her mommy voice, I mean my mommy voice. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what the mommy voice is, it's the voice that you put on when you are telling your kids to clean up, when you're telling the kids that it is time for us to go, when you are telling the kids that I'm not playing with you and don't make me have to tell you one more time. Y'all know that voice, right? Well, our five-year-old was utilizing this voice a little more than I would like. And she was using it with her brother to the point where it was becoming her default. And I at some point started to speak with her about how she addressed him. You know, I would say, Aria, you, you know, don't speak to him that way. Just call him regularly or call him nicely. But after hearing her do this on a couple of occasions, I realized that what Aria was doing was reflecting the way in which I occasionally speak with her and Jace. And I would like to think that it's not as often as she does it, but children are creatures of truth they tend to say it like they mean it and they also tend to say it as they see it or in, or as they experience it and what this taught me from just observing Aria over a period of time was that there were a lot of areas where I could afford to um, address our children with a little more patience love and a more even keeled tone in my voice even though I don't yell at them, but at the same time, if I'm addressing them with impatience, you know, that could ha leave its mark as well. With this, I had to make a conscious effort and a mindful intention towards how I address our children, making sure that I'm speaking with them with more patience and that I take a breath before I address them and ask them to do things. Something else that I noticed was that at one point, early, early on, maybe when she was three or so, Aria started asking for my camera a lot more. And she always wanted to take pictures of things and record herself doing things. And she would always ask me to share them with my friends <laughs> online and my family in Baltimore, um, as well as her grandparents. And while that's cute and all, I also came to understand at one point because it was getting like, I don't want to say it was getting out of hand, but it was becoming her default where she always wanted my phone. But what I found a little more disturbing about it, if that's even a way to describe it, was the fact that she wanted to document everything about her life versus just living her life. And I find that this is something that I'm kind of concerned for for future generations, just given the way the world is headed, but also the technology we use and how it influences how we live on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, technology comes with so many wonderful benefits and how it allows us to communicate with people and how it allows us to operate businesses from anywhere and how it also allows us to create a life that we love to live and the fact that we get to share it with others around us. But I find that my biggest concern is that it may come at the cost of us actually connecting with the people around us in person, face to face live and in living color, without distraction. I could go on and on talking about this. Um, and I think at one point I actually did in one of the earlier podcast episodes that I did where I spoke about being addicted to social media and technology and the effects that that has on us. But in observing Aria's behavior, I took that observation as a need for me to be more discerning of my time on technology and my use of technology. So rather than just scrolling aimlessly throughout the day, really making sure that I was allocating specific times of the day to focus on my social media or utilizing my technology 
So in the time when Ari and Jace would be with me, it wouldn't be that they would see me using my phone or on my computer all the time. And that's not to say that being on technology is a bad thing or having or using technology is a bad thing. But I do believe that there is a benefit in considering how you're using it and making sure that you're using these things with intention so that they're not taking over our lives. Do you feel that way? Can you relate at all? I became a lot more intentional about how I use technology and making sure that I am using it in a way that will serve me, my vision, my joy, and the dreams that I have moving forward, that I'm not just simply on technology to consume media. So often we can find ourselves watching or looking at other people's timelines all in the name of research or inspiration, but when you consider the amount of time that it takes up or the combined amount of time that you spend doing that versus creating content for yourself or brainstorming and mapping out your own dreams and goals, it adds up to quite a lot. I got very clear about how I wanted to use my time with technology and also understanding that not everything has to be a shareable moment. You know, your life in and of itself is share worthy, but that doesn't mean that everybody needs to know about every single thing that you're doing all the time. And the moment that I got really clear about that and I freed myself of this expectation or this need to share on a regular basis, I found that not only was I more joy filled because I wasn't thinking about content all the time, I actually gave my mind and my body and my spirit some time to rest but I was also then able to dedicate that time towards building my business and doing other things that brought me a lot more joy like spending time with my family getting a new hobby like roller skating and then also just planning for my future and making more strategic content versus just putting content out for the sake of putting content out there. The last thing that I noticed and that I'll touch on um, as far as this need for improvement area of the conversation was that I noticed Arya's language. Um, we don't use profanity in our home, at least not around the kids. In moments where maybe something would come up that's a little more profane, um, I would use a different variation of the word. So instead of dropping an F-bomb, I'd be like, oh, fudge. Or um, instead of talking about poop, I'd say, oh, shoot, you know, things like that. And I realized that these are things that Aria and our children pick up so quickly because they're like sponges. Um, even the way in which we perceive things and speak about things, the kids are always watching, learning, and observing. A couple of weeks ago, we were in Baltimore, and Aria wanted to listen to a praise and worship song called Amen by this uh, UK band called For King and Country. After the song was over, she said, man, mommy, that song is so deep. And I looked at her thinking, girl, what do you know about deep? And then after that, I noticed that to Aria, everything was deep. She'd say, mommy, this book is so deep. Mommy, those words are so deep. All of a sudden, it seemed like out of nowhere, everything was deep. And then at one point I asked her, Aria, where did you hear this? I went through a catalog of people who she could have potentially heard this phrase from, including myself. And then I said, did daddy tell you something was deep recently? And she said, yeah, he was reading to me this morning, um, the Daily Stoic. And she said, daddy said that was so deep. Apparently it was a term that really resonated with her because it became a permanent part of her vocabulary. And in this same way, observing our children has really taught me the power of being intentional with the words that we use and why we use them. And we spoke about that at length and in detail. If you are interested in listening to the episode, make sure you check it out after this one. So I say all this to say that there's so many areas where I see the potential and the need for growth and development and improvement in my life as a person who bears good fruit in the world, as someone who shows up leading with the fruits of the spirit, love, kindness, gentleness, self-discipline, joy, and all of these other good things. But it's not to say that it's all bad. There are so many areas where I see so much good about 
the way that I am engaging with parenthood because I think as a lot of times as moms, as parents, as people, we get very down on ourselves about the ways in which we need to be improving and striving to be better when there's also so much to celebrate about who you are and where you are right here and right now. It's so funny because the things that were aspirational goals for me or dreams for me or habits that I really wanted to pick up are things that are now lifestyle habits for our children because it's what they've grown up knowing. So I wanna share some of those things with you guys and maybe you can see some of these things in your life as well. At one point I wanted yoga, wellness, and mindfulness to be a part of my life. It was a dream that I had for myself. It wasn't something that I really engaged in often, um, but the person that I wanted to be was someone who was very mindful and intentional about my wellness, my health, um, the things that I do with my life, and also the way I, I engage with other people. And also someone who just wanted to stretch on a regular basis. The vision for my life at 60 or 70 isn't to be someone who is full of aches and pains and creaky muscles and bones. <laughs> you know, I want to be young and with it. I want to feel as good in my body as I do in my spirit. And I, I believe that age is what you make of it, right? And if you feel young, then you will be young and reflect youth. And I see that mindfulness and wellness being implemented in the lives of our children. Um, at one point, I remember when I was 20 years old, this, I can't even believe I'm telling you guys this, but I remember at one point um, when I was 15 or so, it was like a dream for me to like not be overweight by the time I was 20. <laughs> like crazy, right? Because in my mind, Something that I'd always heard growing up was that when you get older, you just gain weight. It's just something that's bound to happen. After you have children, you just happen to have a completely different body. And it's something that you're going to have to be okay with. You'll be a certain weight. You'll have a certain type of body. There will be certain things that you can't wear. And you just have to get over it. That was a conversation that I feel was um, had a lot and that just became a part of my expectations of getting older. You know, as you get older, your body changes and you're kind of stuck in this life that happens to you versus you really deciding what happens in your life. And by the time I turned 20, when I was still in a body that I loved, I thought, whoa, this is crazy. Like this was, a, this was once a dream. It was all a dream. But I also at that point became very aware of the fact that I made intentional decisions and choices um, to keep myself on a healthier path because of the vision that I had for myself and the lifestyle that I wanted to create as I got older. I wanted to live a happy, healthy, abundant, creative, and purposeful life. And I see that in our children now. Exercise isn't something that we have to force them to do. We don't have to convince them to take care of themselves or want to run or um, to eat well. We don't have to bribe them into eating vegetables and eating healthy because this is just what they know. And it's also something that they really enjoy. I, I find at times Jace will be like jumping all over the place or like he'll be doing something that's like super like, I don't know, animated. And when I say, what are you doing? He's like, mommy, I got to work out. Something else that I've noticed that I'm like really excited about as far as like my seeing a reflection of personal growth was is spiritual devotion. I see this in our children early, um, a love for worship and prayer and an understanding of Christ and living a joy fueled life in Christ that I don't know that I really had earlier on in my life, especially as a child. I don't think that I had that awareness and the benefits of living a faith fueled life. And I see this in the fact that our children know about God. You know, they they may not have a full on understanding of the benefits of having a relationship with God just yet, but they understand the ways in which he is present in our lives. Our children see me 
in prayer. They see me reading my Bible on a regular basis. They see me listening to praise and worship and just like adoring God for all of who he is. And I don't say this to sound um, very righteous or that I'm doing all the things that are needed. But what I'm most proud of is the fact that our children get to see what a relationship with God looks like and understanding that being a Christian, being a follower of Christ, isn't relegated to religion. It's not just about religion and following rules and regulations. Um, or even doing all of the things that everyone tells you you should be doing as a Christian. But what's most important is that you develop a personal relationship with God, the creator, and an understanding of why the sacrifice that Jesus made for us is so important. And I see that. And it brings me so much joy to just see them dancing and listening to praise and worship and really praising God with all of their might, especially Aria. She's such a wonderful singer um, and she loves singing and praising the Lord. Another really cool reflection that I've observed in our children is um, the, the fact that they are really affirming people. They give such amazing words of encouragement. When I tell you, there is nobody that will hype you up in life the way your children will hype you up. Aria is like one of the greatest hype women you can ever have in your corner. She is like the ultimate hype woman, okay? I see at moments where she is just affirming and loving and encouraging um, everyone around her, but especially Jace. I see it in the way that she speaks with Jace and where Jace will do the seemingly smallest of things and she'll be like, yeah, Jace, good job. You can do it, Jace. Oh man, mommy, did you see that Jace is doing this? And I see it in the way that she en engages with strangers where she says hi to everyone that she meets. If she sees someone doing something awesome, she lets them know that they're doing something amazing. And, and just understanding that the way you see people is how your children will also see people. If you see people with love, if you see them with trust, if you see them with potential, if you see them in the way that God sees them, and if you then engage with them in the way that God engages with us, you know, as his children, that really then becomes the reality and the world that you begin to create. And your children then begin to see it too. And they, they begin to mimic, you know, or reflect what it is that you put out in the world. Can I help you, boo? And the last thing I notice about the reflections that are being shown in our family is uh, about accountability and integrity. Aria... This little girl right here, this beautiful five-year-old, is someone who will hold you accountable to your vision, your goals, and your dreams. And I always talk about accountability as it relates to your pursuit of your joy and your purpose and how important it is to have people in your corner who are not only aware of what your goals and your dreams are, but also having those same people that will hold you to those goals and dreams and making sure that you are sticking to the things that you say that you actually want for yourself. And I love accountability because I find that um, outside accountability is what holds me in alignment with my vision most. There are a lot of times where I think people say they want to do things, but then if left to themselves, it doesn't happen. And I say that of myself too. If I'm somebody, if I just say the things that I want and I say them to myself, a lot of times those things are a lot slower to happen and I can make excuses <laughs> for the reasons why the things haven't happened or why I haven't done them. But the moment I begin to share my vision with other people around me, that becomes the that becomes the moment where I actually then begin to put a plan in place to make that vision a reality. And I have other people to hold a mirror up to me when I'm not doing the things that I say I want to do. But more importantly, I also have the people to root me on um, and really hold me to the success that I am seeking for myself, in addition to also keeping me on track for the goals and the dreams that I've set for myself as well. Because I think that that's something that happens a lot. We say we want to do things and then we just get distracted because of shiny object syndrome, right? You like have one thing that you want to do, but then there are like 15 other things that you could be doing that are also equally exciting. But 
what was the vision? What was the thing that you were supposed to be focusing on? So Aria is somebody who will hold you accountable and she will follow up on it. When I tell Aria that I'm going to do anything, like the wonderful child that she is and most children, because like I said, they're truth tellers. When I'm not doing the very things that I said I was going to do, Aria calls me out on it. And that is something that I do all the time with my friends, my family, my clients, and my students. And it's not because I want to be that annoying friend who's always reminding you of the things that you haven't done, but it's because I care. Because I believe in the people that I'm holding accountable. As I say this of them, I'm saying it to you who, who's listening right now, as you're listening. I believe in their goals and dreams. And I also believe that what they are doing is important and it serves a really valuable place in this world and that brings me to everything in between and that's and then and considering everything in between the good the bad and i don't want to say the ugly so i'm just saying everything in between there's also a part of this conversation where i'm understanding that as i stay true to my journey that then gives our children the permission and the confidence to understand that they also get to live in the joy of their journey as well. They also get to rediscover themselves. They also get to give themselves permission to pursue the life of their dreams, no matter what that looks like and no matter what season of their life they're in. The moment I began to allow myself to go down this path of self-discovery and enjoying the joy in the journey, that was the moment I really began to gain my freedom. That is the moment when I began to gain clarity. That is the moment where I was really able to create a vision for my life that would allow me to sustain my joy, my dreams, and my goals um, in a way that wasn't self-sacrificing or self-sabotaging. All right, guys, I know I've been talking with y'all and talking your ears off about my personal journey to purpose and how this growth is being reflected in the life of our family. You know that I want to share some solutions and joy gems to help support you in your journey to creating a visionary life that reflects the joy that you desire. But before I share the solutions and joy gems, I want to pause for a break with some special words and something that's coming up. Quick question. Are you overwhelmed with life right now? Feeling overworked, underpaid, and totally uninspired at a job that you hate? Okay, so maybe you don't hate it, but you definitely find yourself energetically drained at the idea of going to work every single day before you step out of bed. Am I right? Or do you wish that you had the confidence and the discipline to use your creative gifts to create a life that is more fulfilling and purpose propelled? Or maybe, you are just plain old over it. And by it, I mean everything. <laughs> if you answered yes to one or maybe all of these things, I'm here to help you dream again. I would like to invite you to join me for a 90 minute masterclass for women and entrepreneurs who want a roadmap to feeling less overwhelmed, less overworked, and more connected to their dreams and goals. You'll walk away from this Journey to Dream Masterclass with tools to assess what's keeping you from living a life that feels good in every area of your life. You'll also gain the permission and confidence to set boundaries with yourself because listen, sometimes that's a necessary thing too, as well as setting boundaries with people that keep you distracted and misaligned from living in your joy. But more importantly, you'll gain the clarity around how to craft a vision that produces an unapologetically beautiful life that is grounded in joy, improving your relationships, your career, your wellness, and even your finances. You'll benefit from this masterclass no matter where you are in life, or even if you're unsure of what your purpose is, whether you're a college graduate that's looking to find work, a stay-at-home mom who's looking to rediscover yourself and your identity outside of your children, or maybe you're even at a point in your career where you're switching career paths or you're ready to enter retirement and you're just unsure of what it is that you want to do next. Listen, your goals are attainable and the best years are ahead of you. And if you've lost sight of how to get there, I am here to help you rediscover your freedom and joy by teaching you how to simply dream again. If this sounds like something that you may be interested in, 
please visit the link shared below or somewhere around this screen up here, down there in a comment box somewhere and register for this free masterclass where I will teach you how to journey to your dreams again by creating a system of how you can change your life through joy. I hope to see you there, but until then, I hope that you remember that we're on this journey together. One feel good thing at a time. I'll catch you in class. And we are back with some solutions to create an environment that is a reflection of love, pride, and joy in your life. So the first solution I want to share with you guys is to ask yourself, what is the atmosphere that I'd like to create? And take note of what that is and make the necessary changes to put that into action. In other words, create a vision. And I talk about vision all the time. And it really comes down to understanding where it is that you want to go and how you want things to be so that you can then create an atmosphere for that change. The second thing I want to share with you as far as a solution to put you on path for a visionary life is don't beat yourself up, okay? <laughs> don't beat yourself up about the way that things are, even if they feel less than perfect, but embrace the growth process with love. You can't focus on the past, you can't change the past, but what you can change is the present and how you engage with the present so that it creates a reflection of what you really desire moving forward for the future. That's what the vision is. So rather than thinking about all the things that are going wrong, think about the things that you have, the way you'd like to change them, and then do the work. <laughs> okay, do the work, and, but with love. Do the work with love and joy, understanding that progress is a process. The third solution I wanna share with you guys is to anchor your vision with truth. And when I say this, look for truth and i talk about this all the time but for me my version of truth comes through the word of god and it also involves feelings and things like that because i'm only human right we're only human and our feelings are really major indicators to the things that we should or shouldn't be doing if something disturbs your peace or doesn't bring you peace then more than likely you probably are not supposed to be engaging with it as a part of your purpose and identity there are so many bible stories and evidence in the world that really let us know what a life that is full of joy and abundance can look and feel like and what it can be like too and as I say that there's evidence in the world I also want to say that you shouldn't rely too heavily on the examples of people from the world right because um that comes with its own things and that's where the comparison game comes in and we all know that comparison is a thief of joy but at the same time also understanding that in the same way that someone else receives a blessing or you see that their life is bearing good fruit your life can also do the same but also recognizing that all humans are flawed and the things that their route to success doesn't necessarily have to be your route to success and their story doesn't have to be your story no matter how perfect a person's life may look on the outside you never know with entirety what's going on behind closed doors so the best thing that you can do is be grateful for the life that you have and make the most of the opportunities that you're presented with and anchoring yourself in truth i talk about that all the time the bible shares stories of people who are flawed all the time and understanding how the word of god was able to rectify those flaws in the lives of those people and, and how experiences that maybe weren't so joy filled um, and kind of heavy ultimately came back to glorify God in the process. These are all examples of truth that really help um, edify our fa faith rather than breaking us down and thinking that we have no control over the things around us. But it really does come back to joy. Now that I've shared those three solutions with you guys, I want to hop into a couple of joy gems. And I have two in particular that I'd like to share with you. And the first one comes from Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. You guys often hear me talking about good fruit and fruits of the spirit. And these are the fruits that I'm talking about. All of these fruits, all of these characteristics are characteristics that we should strive to 
exemplify not only in our families, but in the world in general. That's good fruit. <laughs> but let's back it up a bit to 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. <laughs> and we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed in his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Basically, what Paul is saying that we when we begin to live in our joy, when we begin to seek our purpose and we begin to radiate the goodness of God's freedom, we're then able to radiate his glory and his glory. Glory really comes in the form of joy. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. There are so many times when I find people come to me and they say, oh, my goodness, you are radiating. Oh, my goodness, you are just so happy and joy filled. And I always give the glory back to God. And I say it's a God glow because that's legit what it is. It's not by my might or my power that I'm able to anchor myself in joy, considering myself alone, because if left to myself alone, I wouldn't, it'd be very hard for me to really trust that I'm able to do anything. But because I'm trusting in God's ability to work in my life and really bring to fruition the vision that he's placed on my heart, I'm able to understand and know that he gets all the glory. So I just radiate the goodness that I feel because of him. <sighs> it's like a wonderful cycle. Um, so yeah, that brings us to the end of this week's episode. I shot it a little later than normal. So if you've been watching on YouTube, you can see that it is getting really dark. But before I end this episode, I want to invite you guys to visit the site ericalassan.com and subscribe to the newsletter because there are so many amazing things coming up in the next couple of weeks, including the Journey to Purpose Dream Academy fall session. It's coming soon, guys. We're going to kick it off with a Journey to Dream Masterclass. Class. It's going to be absolutely amazing. The link to register for the Journey to Dream Masterclass is included in the description box below as well. So make sure you check that out and you don't miss out on the goodness. It's going to be such a great time. <laughs> Otherwise, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode and that you have found it to be insightful and useful as you journey to purpose. If you're watching on YouTube and you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you are listening to the podcast on an audio streaming platform, please please subscribe so that you are able to get future episodes as well. And if you'd like to follow me and my journey to purpose, you can follow me on social media at Erica Lasan everywhere, especially on Instagram, because that's typically where I hang out. And I cannot wait to speak with you next week because next week we are talking to all of you women out there who feel like you need to be a solo act. Okay. All of you thinking that you can do bad all by yourself. Well, I'm sure you could, but let me tell you what you could do better as a part of a community. <laughs> community matters. And we're going to be discussing a little bit about that next week as well. I hope that you guys have a blessed and wonderful day. And I look forward to chatting with you next week as we journey together. One feel good thing at a time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>